So I'm commencing my croissant making process by making a poolish. And essentially a poolish is a pre-fermented liquid that acts as our yeast extract essentially. So to start off with, I've got 70 mils of water, 370 grams of high protein flour, plain flour that is, 300 mils of just normal milk, and two grams of fresh yeast. So I've added my milk and water to this dough and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to allow it to warm up to room temperature, so about 28, 30 degrees. And then I'm going to crumble my yeast in and whisk it thoroughly. So just a quick little heat on the stove. So we're just going to whisk the yeast around for about a minute so it completely dissolves in the milk water solution. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my flour straight into my mixing bowl with a dough hook attachment. So I'm going to pour my milk water extract in and I'm going to slowly mix it on speed one or two for two minutes just to homogenize the mix. So I've got a timer going for two minutes and I'm just going to get my mixer to um, homogenize the mix and it should look like a shaggy pancake batter almost. You don't want it too um, hard, you don't want it too liquidy, you just want like a really nice pancake mix. So I've got my dough here, this is what it looks like, sorry not a dough, a poolish. It shouldn't have any lumps in it, it should be um, a little bit smooth but it looks like a pancake batter. So I've just scraped the sides, folded the dough in, and I'm going to put it in my nice bowl and it's going to sit for about 5 to 10 hours with cling film over it until it expands twice its volume. Just note, you shouldn't really do it more than 10 hours because this yeast will become overactive and you won't have very good rising in the oven stage of baking your croissant or your dough. So you can overprove it, you can also underprove it. So you want to reach in between 5 to 10 hours for the mix to work optimally. So the next step is we need to make some clarified butter for our croissant dough. So clarified butter is essentially butter that has been um, cooked down to separate the butter fats from the butter protein and to reduce all the extra water which is in the butter. What I've got here is I've got my butter culture. Essentially this is 700 grams of Papa Salsa's um, butter which has been cultured and I've just also cultured it for about a week out of my bench top plus refrigerated it and just made it a bit more tasty essentially. So what I want to do is I want to cut 130 grams of butter from this log. The reason I want 130 grams is the recipe only calls for 100 grams, but because of the evaporation, 30 grams will be lost. So we need to make a little bit extra. So, we, so initially what you'll see is you'll see these white bubbles form at top. Once our bubbling and our um, foam settles down, that then indicates our clarified butter is done. So I've got another, let's say 30 seconds to go with this. So after your butter has been clarified, what you want to do is you just want to strain it. You can use a muslin cloth um, or a chucks to do it. I'm just going to use a chucks today because it's cheap and easy and disposable. So to do it, I'm just going to fold it in half and the fold a two and sever it to form a funnel. And that's just going to sit in there. I'm going to pour my butter through that. So that's just going to seep through and our clarified butter will be at the bottom. All the browned butter at the top will be separated out and yeah perfect we're just going to refrigerate that now so here we are about eight hours later our pullish is done we can see that it's nicely risen very soft and i've already gone ahead and weighed up the next ingredients to make our actual croissant dough so over here we've got about 865 grams of just plain flour we've got our clarified butter which has been set I'm just going to reheat this in the stove to put it back into a liquid consistency. We've got, um, how much is this? We've got 100 grams of caster sugar. We're going to have 100 grams of just beaded egg. We've got 15 grams of salt, 55 grams of fresh yeast, and 100 mils of fresh water. So first up, I'm going to melt my butter and I'm going to dissolve my yeast in my water. So I've just added my polish in. Now my yeast extract. I'm going to now add my sugar. So my salt that was. Now my sugar. And I'm going to add my 
flour as well. Just gently, I'm gonna slowly mix this through. I've made the dough. I've added all my ingredients but the clarified butter. I've just given it a mix with a spatula and I'm going to set up on the mixer for two minutes now. After two minutes, I'm then going to add my clarified butter and mix lightly for another two minutes. So we've just added the clarified butter and the mix is quite hard. So it's gonna start it off slowly. I've just pulled my dough out of the mixer, just giving it a little mix around. As you can see, it's got a nice smoothness to it. It's nice, glossy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shape it so I can put it in a nice airtight container, which is also lined with just some baking film to prevent it to not to stick. I recommend using two containers and subdividing it in because it is quite a large dough. It does have active yeast, and even though it's going in the fridge, it will still rise. Day one is now finished with both our doughs wrapped up in airtight containers, and they'll be refrigerated overnight. So I've taken my dough out of the fridge. It's been in there for about 12 hours, nicely risen. I've got my silicon um, sheet that's been in the freezer for overnight also, just so it's cold. My workspace is about 20 degrees, so it's nice and malleable. The next step is I'm just going to flatten this with my hand just to get rid of all those air pockets. And I want to make sure my dough is about 40 centimeters by 30 centimeters. So my dough has been stretched out just using the back of my hand and it's measuring from about 20 centimeters to 60. So 40 centimeters wide by about 30 centimeters long. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to transfer it to just a um, shopping board lined with foil, not foil, baking paper, and it's going to be refrigerated for at least two hours. The next step is to just aerate your butter, um, just very gently. So you want to put all the rest of your butter in the bowl, just with a um, paddle attachment. You just want to soften it all up so it's ready for the next step. That is about the consistency we want it, just so it's nice and workable. After two hours in the fridge, my dough has come out nicely chilled and my mat, my silicone mat is also chilled. What I want to do now is I want to get my dough and I want to measure 10 centimeter increments going across. Because it's 40 centimeters long, I should get four segments cut. After I cut them, I want to put them back in the fridge and work with one at a time and roll out. Here's my four strips. So I'm just gonna package these up and put them in the fridge. So I've got my sheet of pastry out. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll this so it's vertical. It's 60 centimeters in width. So now my dough is 60 centimeters long, going from 16 to 76 centimeters. Perfect. Just a note, if your dough, when you're rolling it, retracts, it means it's got overworked gluten and it's not going to make an optimal croissant, so you've over kneaded it. You want to make sure that when you roll it, it just take, it just goes with the flow. It's nice and smooth. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to score it lightly halfway. So that's going to be at 44 centimeters. I'm now going to butter one side of my croissant. So we're going to take our nice whipped butter and we're just going to use our spoon to apply it on. I am just gonna do this by eye, but approximately you want to divide it so you've got between 50 to 75 grams of butter on each sheet. So there's my butter, and I'm going to use my um, chef spatula to spread it out and get an even consistency across. Now that my butter is spread evenly, I'm just gonna get my other side and pull it over ever so gently. I'm just gonna pat it flat and I'm just gonna give it one roll with a rolling pin to make sure it is nice and covered. Then it's gonna go refrigerated back in the fridge. So I've got my dough out after spending a couple of hours in the fridge. The butter is nice and tough. That's what I kinda of want. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna roll my dough out so it's 60 centimeters in length, and I'm gonna fold in on itself again to laminate the dough. When laminating, make sure you, it's really hard to do it by hand, but I like to use a nice smooth rolling pin 
and it was consistent pressure with small strokes to control that pressure. So now, after our second lamination, we should have four layers. What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to roll it out, but on the third lamination, I'm going to fold it slightly differently. So I've got my dough rolled out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the top one third in and the other half to meet it half to the other two third mark, just like that. This way, in our fourth lamination step, I'm going to fold it over like that and to get a really nice clean fold. So, just to recap, one third in and the other one comes up two thirds. I'm just gonna give it a quick little roll. So in the last lamination step, we want to just fold our dough directly in half and re-roll. We're then gonna put it back in the fridge for another two hours and then we're ready to prepare our croissants. So on the last day, what I've just done is I've rolled up my pastry and I have subdivided it into my croissant triangles. So what I did is I've measured nine centimeters across my pastry and I have then marked halfway in between, which is 4.5 centimeters. The 4.5 centimeter marks correlate to where the apex of a triangle should be and the base should be nine centimeters wide. When rolling your pastry initially, it's all based on um, user preference, essentially. Um, they recommend about 30 centimeters by about 28 centimeters. However, I'm just doing it so I get a nice consistent shape. When rolling your croissant, just put a little cut down the end of a triangle. And what you wanna do is you wanna be very quick because the butter and the pastry will start to melt in your hands. You want to stretch the triangle out so it's about 40 centimeters long. Then you wanna put it down and just roll it down like this. Once we've got our croissant stressed out, I'm just gonna use my two fingers to evenly roll this up. There, we've got our croissant. I'm just gonna pat it down a bit and we're just gonna let that proof in the fridge for two hours. So I've just baked the croissants off at 220 degrees for about eight minutes and that's the result we get. A delicious, fresh croissant and they smell amazing.